In this lecture, we're going to talk about how Camtasia 2018 works. In other words, we're going to look at the overall pieces and the order in which things go to take things from your screen using screencasts and produce them into MP4 videos that can be uploaded to YouTube, Udemy, or Skillshare. So here is the entire process. So we're talking about how Camtasia 2018 works. The first thing you do when you want to use 2018 is that you start the Camtasia 2018 screen recorder. Now what the screen recorder does is Camtasia is actually released in two halves. This is the orange half. So when you see the big orange, pinkish orange C, that's going to be the recording tool. So this is the big orange C for the recorder. Now what the recorder does is it records everything that shows up on your screen. When you start it, it actually appears in the lower right hand, well actually wherever you position it to show up, but for me it's the lower right hand corner of the screen. Now this capture of the recorder is much larger than it actually is. It's much smaller than this, but this blow up allows us to look at the features on it. It's got a menu and the menus get into fairly detailed features that we're going to talk about in the next section when we talk about the recorder. The next is the area of the screen that you'd like to record. Now I always recommend record full screen. Why restrict the amount of screen that you're going to record when you can zoom in post-production? So do it in post-production. That's the most appropriate time to zoom. I thought it was funny when I used Screencast-O-Matic and found that there was a zoomer in the recorder. And it's like after using recorder, uh, after using Camtasia, I was thinking, why would you ever zoom in record mode? And I actually had students of my Camtasia course ask, where is the zoomer in the recorder? You don't zoom when you're recording. You just record everything that's on the screen. You then, in post-production, in the editor, zoom as much as you want. You can change your zoom. You can fix things. You can't change things when you do it in recorder mode. You do it once, and that's what you recorded. Whereas if you always record full screen mode, you'll be able to zoom and pan in post-production. I'm sorry about that lengthy explanation, but I felt that it was required. Next to it is whether the camera, your uh, webcam is on and on or off. Here you can see the big red X says that my cam quarter is off, but that I am recording audio on my Yeti. And if I pull up the little triangle pull up menu to the right, it'll show me the various options that I have for uh, microphones and whether I want a mic on or off or I can I can record absolutely no mic and just record the screen. The recording value is over <clears throat> the recording volume is over to the right, the little meter. And if I press REC, I start recording what shows up on the screen until I press F10, the hot key to stop the recorder. So here we are in the recorder, and what it does is it records the audio, typically from an external microphone, but it could be from a built-in microphone or, or one in your webcam. You get to pick the microphone you want to use. I'm using a Blue Yeti. And it captures all of the video on the screen. Now this is known as a screencast software demonstration. What it does is it captures everything that appears on the screen and you can do things like software demonstrations of using the browser to check here is my um, Udemy cat uh, my Udemy course catalog so I can go and show people that I can show people using an Excel spreadsheet to do various calculations. So that's the idea of the Camtasia 2018 screen recorder. It records the audio from your microphone and a picture of the screen. Now, the other thing you can do with the screen is rather than just showing random software or demonstrating how to do things, is that I can put together a screen presentation, a presentation of slides, which is what you're looking at right now. I'm just playing a PowerPoint presentation on the screen by clicking my mouse to advance slides, and I'm recording the screen using Camtasia.
So to do this, you prepare the slides ahead of time and you show them as a slide presentation. Something like this, as when I showed the first slide in the entire course. Now the thing I want to point out is that as you're recording, you can easily move through between these two sources. Source 1, a screencast software demonstration, and Source 2, a presentation in PowerPoint. For instance, I'm doing a presentation in PowerPoint right now. Now what you're about to see would be edited out in post-production. Don't worry about post-production, we're not to the other half of the Camtasia tool yet, which is the video editor. But I can break out of this presentation, come over here and start demonstrating a screencast of something that I'm doing, and then I can come back to the presentation and say, play it from here, and I'm back to where I was. Now that a nasty in-between of going between the screencast and this presentation would be edited out once again in post-production. And you're going to love post-production. Lean on it heavily to do things in post-production. We already talked about zoom and pan. Well, you're also going to want to edit things out like transitions between a screencast software demonstration and a presentation using PowerPoint. Now, the third source of input is going to be your webcam. You can have a picture-in-picture -picture talking head, and if you do, your talking head will typically appear in the lower right-hand corner, but I can expand it to take over the whole screen. Think about it. All of these recording options in post-production, I can play with them and make them big, make them small, rearrange them, mute them out, make them disappear, all of these things. Right now, I'm just capturing everything that I want to put together when I start editing the video. So that's the final input to recording it, and it kind of ends the recording half of Camtasia 2018. Now, when you stop a Camtasia recording using the F10 hotkey, then what Camtasia does is it saves a copy of its screen recording to a TREC file. So it's going to be a file name.trec. You get to name the file and determine its location. At the end of the recording, it'll ask you where you want to save it. And this is for a TechSmith recording file, so trec file. The trec file becomes the input to the second half of the Camtasia recording process, which is running the Camtasia video editor. Now, notice at this point also comes along your fourth point of input, which is all of the machinations you can do in video editing. I can, I can put intros on things, I can zoom, I can pan, I can, uh, I can uh, mute sound, I can uh, do all of these things right directly within the video editor. And I consider that to be input number four. Now, the Camtasia video editor is kind of complex. It's much more complex than the recorder. The recorder is a little thing that shows up in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and goes away when you start recording. But the video editor is a full-screen application that has libraries and other things that you can include over on the right, the screen editing area that shows you what your video looks like so far, and the timeline down at the bottom. We can also see that you can add effects and configure options over on the right in a panel that pops up and goes away. So that's the Camtasia video editor part. After you record all the stuff, so you decide all the stuff you want to gather. I want to have a screencast of a, a screen demonstration, and I want to move over and show a presentation in PowerPoint, and I want to have a talking head. Don't make it too complicated, especially your first one, but you can use all of these things. You get them all in the recorder. It creates a T-Rec file, and you open Camtasia, the editor part. Now... It's going to save things in a TSC proj file. And I think this is really clever of Camtasia and one of the reasons I like it. The original source, your TREC file, never gets modified. Instead, the Camtasia video editor keeps track of its modifications in its project file. So it says, oh, okay, delete the first three minutes from this video. 
Okay, it just makes a note in the project files that when you load this T-Rec file, remove the first three minutes. You don't actually remove it. So you can go and make as many edits or undo edits at any time. And I love that. Plus, you can bring in other sources and work with them. What other sources might you bring in? Well, what about an MP4 um, from a uh, video camera? What about doing green screen with that too? You can bring in background music or downloaded stock video images. All of this stuff you pull into the video editor and you massage it all together, adding transitions and zooms and all kinds of effects until you get what you want as a finished video for a lecture. Now that lecture gets out of, outputted as a simple MP4 file. And that MP4 file can either be loaded on YouTube, if you just wanna share it simply on Facebook or something, or it can be turned into a Udemy, we looked at that, or a Skillshare course. We haven't looked at Skillshare too much. It's another course publication platform. So that's the entire process, all the way from doing screencasts and presentations and webcams in the video recorder, saving your T-Rec file, loading it into the video editor, and merging it with other background music and other video you might have, doing effects and zooms and pans and cuts and edits until you get your finished MP4 file, which you upload to YouTube, Udemy, or Skillshare for sale. And in the next section, we're going to dig deep into the Camtasia 2018 screen recorder. I'll see you there.